It's been ages since I fired up a Seto Corsa for a good old fashioned Mazda MX-5 battle and that's mainly because the track selection in low fuel motorsport just hasn't really inspired me in recent weeks. However lots of you keep recommending alternatives to LFM and one of them is World Sim Series so today I'm giving it a go. I've signed up to WSS as a rookie and I've got to complete five clean rookie races to get my AM license. Now these races are quick 12 minutes sprints with a fixed setup. There's not even any qualifying. You're assigned grid positions based on your WSS pace rating. I've been placed P7 out of 9 for this one. Can I get around Okiyama without picking up any incident points to get that all important clean race in? Let's find out. Well, we're just about ready to get underway here at Okayama, and that looks like a jump start in front of me. Kevin Goyer in P5, just rolling forward before the red lights went out there, and when they do go out, he is really sluggish to get underway, so that might well be a position gained already before we even make it to T1. Fortunately, there was enough room to my right that allowed me to move to the inside of Goyer and get the position, and it looks like we might get two positions because that is Giorgio Verretto out onto the grass, exiting the first corner. So straight away, I've climbed from seventh up into fifth position. A really encouraging start here at Okiyama. And remember, this is only a 12-minute sprint. We haven't got time to hang around here. And Goya certainly isn't hanging around. He's applying all sorts of pressure into the hairpin. So I do go defensive. Now, I want to try and avoid getting into a battle with Goya because we know he's going to serve a drive-through penalty. And actually, that defensive line has cost me a lot of exit speed out of that corner. So Goya has indeed regained his fifth position. That drops me down to six, and we're already starting to lose a bit of ground on the leading four. Let's not panic. Remember, Goya will have to go down pit lane. If not at the end of this lap, then at the end of the second lap. Meanwhile, I've got my hands full now with Giorgio Verretto. Verretto has recovered from that excursion into the sand at the first corner, and now he is applying all sorts of pressure on my rear. And speaking of pressure, look at Kevin Goyer ahead. He is in a real hurry to try and get past the two cars in front of him. That's Will Harvey in fourth position and Norbert Meyerhofer in third. Oh, and I just thought for a moment then that Kevin Goyer might have been losing it. The rear stepping out there into that left-hander. He's managed to hold on to it and actually he's made a pass around Will Harvey. So Goyer taking some real risks here to make progress. I suspect that means he's not going to go into pit lane at the end of this lap. And no, he's not. Goyer staying out. He clearly wants to make as much progress now before he serves that penalty. So out of the final corner then, I'm going to end lap one in sixth position. More importantly, without any instant points, we've kept it clean so far. The racing has been close. It's been very close, but it has been fair. As I say that, Verretto tries a very late move up the inside into T1. I only saw that at the very last second. I adjusted my line to give him extra space. It looks like he almost lost control, though. Let's go back and take another look at that. And it's actually quite difficult to identify who's who when we're all running the same paint job, but we'll We'll soon see Verretto when he tries that move up the inside and he rides the curb. These curbs are so, so dangerous in the Mazda, particularly these inside curbs. You only have to graze them when you're on the gas mid-corner and it ends in disaster. Right, back to the live action. We're on lap two and I've got a much better run out of that corner this time around. It might give me the momentum I need to challenge Will Harvey ahead. I'm going to pull out of the slipstream here. Can I get alongside him and make a move up the inside into this hairpin? To keep it safe, I've got to keep it tight. But remember, not too tight. I don't want to touch that kerb on the inside. It looks like I've got the job done. Oh, but there's a big accident right in front of me. Norbert Meyerhofer coming right back across track. Somehow, I've managed to avoid it and I've managed to hold on to the position as well. I felt sure Harvey was going to sneak back past there. Dear me, that was a fright. A big, big fright. I was a little bit loose exiting that last corner as well. I think it may give Harvey another opportunity to have a sniff up the inside. But once again, I just about managed to hold on. But the pressure is rising here. Let's take another look. Starting with the overtake on Harvey. I tuck it up the inside and pull the pass off perfectly. But while I'm concentrating on trying to avoid that curve, I didn't see Norbert Meyerhofer make that big, big mistake in front of me. 
Yeah, Meyerhofer just running out a bit wide on exit. Two tyres on the grass. He loses control and slides right back across track. Amazingly, no one hit him. So we're approaching the end of lap two, up into P4. But remember, Kevin Goyer has to take that drive-through penalty. And he is indeed entering pit lane at the end of this lap. So as I cross the line, I am now going to be up into P3, a podium position. But will I be able to hold on to it? We're going to jump forward now to later on this third lap. And I am being put under real pressure from Will Harvey. I take the defensive line once again into that back hairpin. But he is not letting up here. And it's not just Harvey either because Giorgio Verretto is also joining in this fight. So it is a three-way battle for the final podium position at the moment. And once again, I'm a little bit loose through there. I'm really struggling with that corner in the Mazda. But thankfully, I was just far enough ahead to stop Will Harvey challenging me into this left-hander. So at the moment, I'm still holding on to P3. Oh, but no, I've just clipped the kerb on the inside. I said how dangerous they were. And all it takes is the slightest touch. You saw there. There, the car screaming to let go. I've managed to save it, but it's cost me two positions. Yeah, let's take another look at this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. These curbs are lethal. Watch my front right tyre. As soon as it touches the curb, look how the car reacts. That rear is on its way around. Thankfully, I managed to save it, but it's dropped me from third down into fifth position. And incredibly, we're already at the halfway point of this race. These 12 minute sprints absolutely fly by. So I'm in P5, but I'm still well within a shout of the podium here. Currently, that third place is occupied by Will Harvey, but Giorgio Verretto is just 0.4 of a second behind now, and I'm just 0.4 of a second behind Verretto. So all to play for here with six minutes still left on the clock. Big lockup from Harvey, and he's been tagged by Verretto. Harvey has gone, and once again, I'm forced into evasive action to get past. Ah, safely. Well, another big fright there. Remember, I've got to try and finish this race with zero instant points at the moment. I am living on borrowed time because this was really close. Big lock up there. Moretto tries to take advantage with a sniff up the inside. There's contact and Harvey spins out. Right, back to the live action then. That has actually cost me a little bit of time. Moretto now 1.2 seconds clear and instead I've got company from another driver behind. That is Toby Holloway. And I've switched the TV cam on so we can see just just how close this battle is going to get because look who's behind Holloway now. It's Kevin Goyer. Goyer has served that drive through penalty and he is on a mission. He is tearing through the pack and he's putting Holloway under all sorts of pressure now. We're watching Goyer on the TV cam and he is now going to try and make a move on Holloway. They're side by side. Now this is playing to my advantage because they're slowing each other down. However, I suspect that the respite is only going to be temporary because Goyer is now through. He's up into P5 and we can see what sort of a charge he's on. He is going to be on my tail in no time. Which is astonishing in itself when you consider that Goya has already served a drive-through penalty. He must have some real pace about him to have caught us back up this quickly. So yeah, I reckon the odds are against me holding on to this fourth position, but I've at least got to give it a try because there are only three minutes left on the clock. So just a couple of laps left here at Okayama. I'm going to try with everything I've got to hold on to this P4. I go defensive into T1. However, Goya is going to maintain that momentum with a wide line around the outside. We're still side by side and in fact Goya's got the car length's advantage now he makes the pass stick maybe I can cut back up on the inside on exit so we're going to still be side by side this is a fantastic battle now for P4 but I think I'm just going to lose out I'm not far enough alongside and Goya is going to hold the inside line into the hairpin so once again my best hope is going to be the switchback I try the wider entry but no I'm nowhere near it Goya really fast through that corner he's made that fourth position his own I'm going to have to settle for fifth here or will it get worse because Holloway is still breathing down my neck and let's be honest there is no way I'm going to find the pace to keep up with Goya ahead Goya is going to clear off now so in these final couple of minutes I've just got to concentrate on making sure things don't get worse I've got to try and hold on to this fifth position a top five finish would be solid Royer ahead now has opened up a one second advantage already. The gap is considerably smaller. Back to Holloway, just 0.3 of a second as we hit this left-hander that I've struggled with all race and I'm going to struggle with again. This time there's contact from Holloway and I have gone. I've crashed out of the race with a couple of laps to go. What a disaster. And absolutely no blame on Holloway here. This was all my doing. I lose the rear on exit. Holloway's got nowhere to go. He's right behind me. He's got no choice but to help me on my way. 
And by the time I got back on track, I found myself down in last position. P9, but in hot pursuit of Will Harvey once again. Harvey's currently running in P8. We're on the last lap now. Can I do anything to spare my blushes and not finish in last position? Well, I can, but Harvey is going to spare my blushes for me because he has made exactly the same mistake that I did. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one who's got caught out by this left-hander. Harvey just running in a bit too quickly. The rear starts to snap and it spins him out. So thankfully, I won't finish last. I'll get P8 at least. And of course, the main goal was to have a clean race. Zero incident points. I've not achieved that thanks to that big mistake. I could have eased back and just played it safe. But where's the fun in that? This was a really, really enjoyable race. Loved it. Normally, I'm not too keen on entering races with such small grid sizes, but this one goes to show you can have excellent fun with a small grid. Congratulations to Giovanni Punzi on the race win, but for me, I've got to settle for P8. Thank you ever so much for watching the race on a new platform. If you race in WSS, please do let me know what it's like. And if you want to see more of my journey through the rookies on this platform, let me know. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.